Hello, I'm back again, long time no see. It's been quite a long time since I uploaded, but I do want to finish this series up and have an inventory that's good enough to be called complete. And in this video, I'll fix the issue where the inventory isn't updating when it's open, and I'll also start creating the hotbar. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so let's first fix the issue where the inventory is not updating when we have it open. All we have to do is make sure to refresh the visuals of the inventory after we pick up something. So let's go to the player inventory script. And this is the auto load script. And we'll go to the add item function. So this is the function that's called after we pick up an item. Now, whenever we update the item quantity or even add an item to the slot, let's update the visuals. So we'll do this by calling a function called update slot visual. And we'll have to create this later. And what we want to pass is the item slot index where we have it as item inventory item zero and this will access the item name and let's also pass in the item quantity and that'll be accessed in the first index so let's call this also here and here so the spots where we update the item now let's create this function So the first parameter is the slot index. The next one is the item name and the new quantity. To update the item, let's first get the slot that holds the item. And we can do this by just passing in the path of the slot. So I do get node and I pass in the path, root, and then world, user interface, inventory, grid container, and slot. So if I go to inventory here, you can see it follows the path. inventory grid container, and then slot. And we have to pass in the correct index as well. So if I go back to the script, and that's how I do it right here, slot index plus one, because we have to account for the zero base indexing. Now that we have the slot, let's just update the item. Actually, first we have to make sure that the item does exist. If it's a new item, then we have to create it. So if it's not null, that means the item already exists. So all we have to do is update the quantity. And I think we have a function called set item, and we just pass in the item name and the new quantity. But let's just make sure. So let's open uh, item. That's what we're modifying. And yeah, set underscore item, and it passes in a name and a quantity, which looks good. And let's go back to player inventory. Else, if the item doesn't exist, we have to initialize that item. So we can do that by slot dot initialize item. And we pass in the item name and also the quantity as well. And let's go to slot.gd to make sure. Initialize item. So item name and item quantity. So that looks good. And I think that should be all. Let's see if this error goes away. Oh, so this error is because item doesn't exist in the scope, but I does. And let's fix this one as well. And that one. And now let's try running this F5 to play. So if we open up the inventory, press Z to pick up and wabam, 99. And this should go to 46. Yeah, so now the inventory updates while it's still open. All right, so now let's go ahead and start adding the hotbar. I added two images, uh, the hotbar background and also the item slot selected background. And you can download these images from the GitHub repo that I have in the description. Let's go to our world scene now. And under user interface, let's add a new node. Control A to add a new node and let's add a node 2D. Let's rename this node to be hotbar. And we can also save this node or save branch as seen. Let's open it up. And the first thing we can start off by is just adding the texture, the hotbar background. So that can go under texture rect. And let's just drag in hotbar background into the texture field. Let's drag this to the bottom center and I'll just approximate it here, but you guys can definitely be more exact. I'll bring it down there and I'll 
play it to see it in action. And yeah, it looks fine. Uh, it's transparent, so feel free to use your own texture. And let me close out of this. I'll just shift it to the right just a tad. Yeah, something like that will work. And now let's add these slots. So the great thing about this is that it's quite similar to the inventory slots. So let's go to hotbar and let's add a grid container like we did before. And I'll rename this to be hotbar slots. And now let's add some panels and these will act like our slots. And I'll rename this to hotbar slot one. And let's resize this by updating the min size property and we'll do 18 by 18 like for what we did for our other slots and now let's duplicate this and i'll just do uh eight slots yeah eight slots will work and now it's vertical so we'd rather have it horizontal so let's go to the grid container and update the columns property and we would want eight columns because there's eight slots and now let's move this on top of our background texture. Got the move button selected and I'll just drag it here. And as you can see, it doesn't quite fit. So let me just update the H separation. And zero is obviously too close. One, I think two works. Yeah, two looks good. And if we want to be exact, let's move the position a bit to the right. Oh, that's too much. So let me try 186 then. Yeah, 186 looks fine. And let's change the Y property to go a bit down to 242. Yeah, 242 looks fine as well. Now we want to add the slot script to all these slots. So click on the first one, hold shift, and then click on the last one. Now we have them all selected. And now let's find the slot.gd script right here and drag it to the script field here. And now we applied the same script to all of these slots and let's quickly play it and see what it looks like. Cool, so we have our slots and since we added the slot script, it takes care of the texture when it's empty. And let's close this. All right, so now let's try to get some items showing in our hotbar. So let's first go to hotbar and let's add a script. And this is going to be quite similar to the inventory script that we have already. So let me just open uh, inventory, it's the first one. In our ready function, we have this initialize inventory function. And we can probably copy this and reuse it for our hotbar. So what I'm going to do is just steal all of this from here. And let's go back to our hotbar and paste it there. So one thing I noticed is slots. So we have to use the hotbar slots. Actually, rather than redefining it all the time in here, let's create a variable called onready slots. And that will be hotbar slots. Actually, it'll be hotbar here. Slots will be hotbar.getchildren. Cool. So let's delete these two lines. Let's comment out this one for now, and we'll keep that and initialize hotbar instead of inventory. And I'll do the same thing here. And if player inventory dot, so instead of inventory, let's access hotbar, but we haven't created this dictionary yet. So we should go ahead and do that. But before I go there, let me just replace everything with hotbar here. Great, so let's create a hotbar in the player inventory.gd. So this is the auto load script, which is global and can be accessed by any of the nodes. So it might be convenient to add it here. So var hotbar. I'll just copy all of this and dump it in here. Now, I think that should be enough, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be an error. There always is. Oh, yeah. So my error this time was a spelling mistake, not the worst kind of error. All right, great. So now you can see some items in the hotbar, but we can't click them because we didn't implement the slot GUI input connection right here, but at least we can view them. 
And that's all for this one. Next video, I'll go over being able to scroll through active items in your hotbar and probably start on being able to click and drag items from the hotbar and to the inventory. Thanks for watching and take care.